the state of conservatism in Canada. That is the topic for tonight's byline. The Manning Conference is on this week. I spoke at it this morning. The theme of the conference is big ideas for conservatives. And this morning, we were talking about the Big Ten. How do you keep fiscal conservatives, social conservatives, libertarians, red Tories, and all the different types of folks inside the conservative movement? And let me be clear, I speak of a movement, not a party. I'm not a party man at the federal or provincial level. I'm interested in ideas and principles. So this conference is trying to bring together people to discuss the common ground. You might not think that social conservatives and libertarians have any, but they actually do. Both do, or at least should, recognize the family as the building block of society. Now, for society to function well, it helps to have strong families. I mean, think about it. Families predate government. But after that, where's the common ground after everyone says family's good? Well, despite the misgivings each side might have about the other, the fact is neither libertari libertarian-minded Canadians nor social conservatives really want the government running our families. As a SOCON, I can tell you that I want the government as far away from my family as it can be. Well, what about the welfare state? Well, that was my topic, and in my view, conservatives need to push for two things. One, a return to the division of powers in our Constitution, and two, a dismantling of parts, or scaling back, if you will, of the welfare state. Why do I say that? Well, let's relate it back to the family. If big government with lots of social programs was the answer to happy families, then the socialist workers' paradise of Quebec would not have the lowest marriage rates, horribly low birth rates, and one of the highest rates of children born out of wedlock. As for the Constitution, well, those that favor bigger government, they'll say, oh, there's only one taxpayer, and the Constitution was written before the intricacies of modern life could be seen, so, you know, just ignore it or change it. To use an old-fashioned word, balderdash. The Constitution wisely left things such as hospitals, social services, anything local, they left all that to the provinces rather than the federal government. And that's because the government closest to the people responds best to local needs. Sir John A. Macdonald, despite popular history, the popular history of the last few decades, did not intend to set Canada up with an all-powerful federal government in charge of everything. Yet sadly today, fully half of Canadians think this is how it should be. A poll released by the Manning Conference shows 51% think the Fed should run health care. It's a provincial responsibility, people. Why should a bureaucrat in Ottawa decide how your local hospital in Kelowna or Bridgewater should run? What do they know about the clinic in Grand Falls or the PA? They don't. Shrinking the federal government, which is an area almost all the different groups inside Preston Manning's Big Tent can agree on, well, that job of shrinking Ottawa should start by getting Ottawa out of areas of provincial jurisdiction. Get the feds out of funding health care. Get the feds out of funding education. Have the gov federal government stick to its own responsibilities. The provinces can look after their own, and the feds can look after the military, ports, bridges, foreign affairs, regulating commerce between the provinces and internationally. They can look after criminal law. That's what they should be doing. They should not be trying to run health care or even funding it. Once we've done that, we need to get the government out of things they shouldn't be doing at all, like subsidizing business, regulating or legislating against emotions, running cartels for certain products. But governments won't do that unless all of us push them with ideas. Politicians are not leaders. They, they're really followers. They need you to start the parade so that they can jump in front and then say they're leading you. And that's the byline. There's a various varieties of, uh, of conservatives within the movement, people who stress particularly a particular values and principles that are sort of part of conservatism in a broad sense. Uh, we have libertarians and social conservatives. We have blue Tories and red Tories. We have uh, green conservatives and environmental skeptics. That was Preston Manning introducing the panel that I was part of this morning, the different types of conservatives inside the tent. Well, one of the things that they released at the Manning Conference is a poll on the state of politics in Canada. Now, if you were smart enough to pick up a copy of a uh, Sun Media newspaper today, or maybe you were online, you would have seen Anthony Fury's story on that. Anthony had the numbers ahead of time, and you've had a good look at them. It, it tells an interesting story of where the country's going politically. And simple fact is, while the plurality might want to vote conservative, 
they're not identifying themselves as conservative. They're very much saying, I'm in the middle, aren't they? You're right to say simple fact is uh, yada, 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 because it's really a kind of messy poll. When we ask people, what is your political ideology, when, when the Manning Center did the barometer, it was left, right, center, and I don't know where the options. Now, as you're seeing on the screen right now, pretty much half the people said they're center. Okay, centrist, what, what does that mean? Maybe it means liberal party sympathetic. Well, interestingly enough, they did ask which party do you most identify with? And so not, not what party do you vote for, but which one are you most identify yeah, with? Yeah, your philosophical inclinations, and as you're seeing there, 26% liberal, just narrowly beating out conservative. It's pretty much equal with the margin of error. But hang on a second, if there was an election tomorrow, Canada, how would you vote? And the Conservatives win, 36% of them. And then the Liberals down at 29, that's a, that's a sizable spread. I think they'd keep a win there in that. So what gives? You're saying you're Liberals, you're saying you're centrists, but are you? Well, or are the, is the Conservative Party conservative, you might say, exactly. is the other thing? Or do people even understand left, right, uh, centrist, are they uncomfortable with those labels? I mean, what's your thoughts there? Yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of mushy middle going on with a lot of people and the way they view things. They like steady hand on the tiller. They kind of like more stuff, as questions about health care suggest. They do think the federal government should be very involved in health care. But at the same time, they don't want to get completely soaked on the taxes. So they're reluctant to let government really get involved in our lives. I, I found it interesting that most people responding to one polling question were sympathetic to smaller government. When it came to healthcare, funding healthcare that is, they did want to see more financing options, like, oh, maybe two-tier healthcare. So, so Canadians are saying they're not opposed to the idea of two-tier options in this barometer poll. If it's up against raising taxes, yeah, they definitely like to see funding alternatives. Okay. Um, so you're on the li more libertarian side, yeah. I'm on the more con uh, social conservative side, yet you and I have a lot of common ground. I want to ask you about this idea of finding common ground and working together to push ideas. Because we're not going to agree on everything, but I've never met a politician I agree with on everything. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we've got to push ideas out there. Is that being done enough now that the conservatives have been in power for seven years? I mean, there used to be a big push for conservative ideas when they were in opposition, but is that still happening? Are those same discussions going on? I'm going to say no. In Ron Paul's speech this morning, and you were saying similar things in your opening statements, well, the big issue is just big government. As Ron Paul was saying, it's just debt. That's what's going to cripple Western society is the massive debt load. But at the same time, we're, we're always racking up more debt and we're lying to ourselves that, oh yeah, we'll take care of you folks with our expanding welfare state. Well, that's clearly nonsense. I, I don't even look at it as a unite the right idea, or libertarians and socons. I look at it as, hey, if you know what two plus two is, you should also know that this is unsustainable. One would think that the left, wanting to be able to keep the social programs we now have in place, wanting to keep social housing from falling apart, you'd think they wouldn't want to bankrupt the state, although I, I think they're but, looking to push it. Karl Marx did say that that's what you got to do before you get to communism. Well, I, I will say this, you know, uh, New Democrats out West, that's been one of their calling cards is saying, unlike the guys in Ontario, hello Bob Ray, or, or other socialists, we will balance the budget so that we can do this. And, and they've, they've had a good track record of that, uh, which is why, you know, you'll often see a conservative and New Democrats coming out of the same areas out there. Uh, it's going to be interesting over the weekend. You'll be dropping by, I'm sure. Yep, definitely. All right, so we'll see you at the Manning Conference, perhaps see you on TV talking about it. Email me your thoughts on the state of conservative, conservatism in Canada. Uh, we'll take a break. I'll learn how to speak. Send me your thoughts, byline at sunmedia.ca. More to come.